is the hack. Focus a lot of energy on your book description and focus 80% of this energy and effort and time on the first sentence, the headline, which hooks the attention of the people. Thank you for tuning in to Hacks and Hobbies with your host, Junaid. We're visited by our amazing guests coming from all walks of life. We want to learn their story, their struggles, and their journey on how they got to where they are today. So stick around. In this episode, we chat with Micho Staviki. He shares his remarkable journey from a regular day job to becoming a successful author and book marketer. Discover the inspiration that led them to start writing and publishing books. Learn valuable insights into book marketing and advertising, especially in the world of self-publishing. Whether you're an aspiring author or simply curious about the world of books, you won't want to miss this episode. Michal, thank you so much for coming on to the podcast. You're most welcome. That's a pleasure for me and an honor. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. We've been connected for quite a while and you've done some amazing work publishing books, helping others publish books. How did you get into that space? Oh, that's a long story. So brace <laughs> yourself. It all started in 2012. Yes. When I read the book, The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson, back then I was just the ordinary Joe working in IT, mortgage, three kids, marriage, and so on, day job, nothing else. Um, but that book, uh, it shares the message of Jim Rohn. Success is a few disciplines uh, repeated over time. Fa uh, failure is a few simple error in judgments repeated over time. Mm. And and for me, it was a big discovery because I thought that success is something grand. So I wasn't able to do it. But yeah. if, if it's just a few simple disciplines, then maybe I can do it. And I started to transforming my life. Mm. And I... I just not restarted my personal development. I, I was, if I wasn't taking care of my job and life, family and so on, I was mm. listening or reading or watching. Yeah. And uh, then I read or rather reread uh, the seven habits of highly effective people where there is mention about personal mission statement. So I started working on that mm. and rediscovered that. Yeah, I want to be a writer. That was my childhood dream. Yeah. And I stumbled. I started a few blogs which failed. I wrote a short story, short, short fiction story in Polish, which like I posted in on the self-publishing forum and it was mm -hmm. rightly decimated and I had to decide, okay, Am, am I going to hone my craft for the next five years or mm. do something else? Yeah. And I had no time. Like I wanted to start making money outside of my day job as soon as possible. Yeah. And then one of my friends read my blog post and said, this personal business statement stuff, it's a good material for a book, uh, an ebook. And then it was March. 2013 mm -hmm. and i had no clue that amazon exists uh, in poland it's not that popular and sure. uh, so i just did my research published my first book in may 2013 and never stopped since then never and in since. yep in 2016 i started running ads uh, for my books mm -hmm. on amazon and less than a year later, I started helping others with that. And because I had my own 19 books out there published, I yeah. know the process. So it's not that I, it, it's my business, but right. if someone needs help, like friend of a friend, uh, I can tell them each and every step of the process, what to do to publish your book successfully. Yeah. And that's amazing. So. I think what I picked out of from the story that you shared is number one, you were inspired after reading a book. Hey, this is something really interesting. Maybe there's something in there. And it also has to go, I think it also has to do something about what age we are in, right? 
what age group, I guess you can call it, like which age group you're, because when you're in the twenties, you're not thinking about writing a book, right? When you're in the thirties, maybe there's a little bit of inkling, but then as you get older and then those things come and push you like, okay, maybe there's something that I want to do. And then, so you started writing the blogs and then it's your personal journey. And that's the one thing that is original and only Michal can talk about, right? So those are personal journeys. And I think that's something that people don't realize. It's a personal journey people want to listen to. It's nothing grandiose because everything else is already uh, out there. It's already written for, but the personal journey, your personal origin story, personal journey is something that still is a secret because you haven't talked about it. So you started with that. So that's really awesome. And it shows me and reminds me, okay, because I've been blogging since 2005 as well. There's a ton of blogs that I wrote and I was like, maybe there's something that I can convert from there into a book, but who would read it? I already have a book on a very specific topic that's, that I'm passionate about. So taking the content from the past and seeing if that makes sense would again be another insight into looking into if, if that even makes sense. I would say it makes sense, especially like we wrote since 2000, uh, sorry, 2005 four, years, yeah, five, four, four or yeah. five. So you have an audience, people were willing to read. Starting from writing a book mm -hmm. is actually not that great idea because then writing a book or rather producing a book is a lot of work. Yeah, It's not just writing 1000 words blog post. It's a lot of work. And so... If you already validated that people are interested in what you are writing, yeah. then yes, it makes total sense to to write a book. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, I, I have a brilliant idea. Like I'm advertising books uh, for a living, mm -hmm. and come on, I'm so <laughs> exasperated with this crowd that I wrote my first book and it's gonna be bestseller, sell million copies. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I wouldn't count on, the, on that. So uh, don't like validation, like uh, Pat Flynn teaches with starting a business, mm -hmm. with starting a book, it's smaller level, but still uh, the same applies. It's so much effort Yeah, because writing and producing and marketing a book can consume like half a year of your life. So be serious about this and mm. don't just do it on a whim. Wow. I love that. So let's go a little bit deeper on what it takes to, let's say, create a book or market a book. We could pick two pads. Of course, you're already talking about what it takes to create a book. How about we go a little deeper into what it takes to market a book? I would say I don't know because I I'm a know. lazy marketer. I, I, I did the the rookie and usual mistake, which is 80% of effort goes into production, 20% into marketing, yeah. and it should be the other way around. It should be other way. Yeah. And, but I can tell you from observer point, because I'm in the self-publishing space. So I know a lot of authors and the ones who are the most successful are the ones who are doing a lot of marketing. Mm. They at least try to be 50, 50, if not more. One of my advertising customers is a girl who wrote like hundred books. Wow. But books. in the first year, all she did was writing and marketing around the clock, nothing else. Mm. Me, I wrote my books. Slap them together, sent an email to my email list, uh, scheduled a few promotions on promo sites, and I'm done. That's the lazy way of doing it. And it doesn't spell success. Like I was lucky. I sold all, over 85,000 copies of my books, but wow. I started in 2013 when it sure. was so much easier. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. I started with ads when it was so much easier. Now, like now, I'm slapping my forehead. Come on, I should 10x or 100x my ads effort in 2016. Now sure. it's so hard. Yeah. Back then it was so easy. So mm -hmm. I just 
started a bunch of random ads and my uh, sales skyrocketed from uh, a few a day to a few dozens a day. So since you're a lazy marketer, you're like, okay, let me just advertise, pay somebody to market for me. Let's go down that rabbit hole then. What does it take to advertise your book? And where are the different places that you're advertising? Are you advertising in podcasts? Are you advertising in like website ads? What kind of different ways can somebody advertise their book? Okay, so I'm in that space. So I, I know it. I'm also active only on uh, with Amazon ads because this is easy. This is, like, I don't need any copywriting or much copywriting i don't sure. need graphic skills at all because all the amazon ads are doing they are uh, fetching the data from the metadata of the book mm -hmm. cover title and so on so all i do is the backend numbers and so on and this is my strong suit facebook ads with those graphics and how much graphic there can be and how much mm -hmm. text and it's I am, it's not my playground at all. Okay. I'm aesthetically blind. I have a funny story about, I, I produce a few of my books and yeah. I hired people on Fiverr to create covers for me and they sure. did it according to my guidelines. And they were terrible, <laughs> awful. Like people see them and run away screaming in horror yeah. so bad so this is how i approach anything graphic i don't do don't double it with it got it uh, but going back to what's working amazon ads are working very well because you advertise on amazon mm. where people number one a lot of amazon users are readers because this is how Amazon started a, as a bookstore. As a bookstore. Second, second, they are in the buying mindset already. Mm -hmm. If you advertise they on Facebook, the they are scrolling, they are distracting themselves on fa on uh, Amazon. They are shopping exactly. Yeah, they're at a, that, they're actually at a bookstore ready to buy a book, and if somebody cuts their catches their eye, they're going to buy it. So it totally makes sense that you'd advertise your book at a store. Keep going. Yeah, I recently uh, checked the data of one of my customers and his conversion rate on Amazon was four times higher than Facebook ads because wow. yeah, you have a distracted person who goes then to Amazon and yeah. they will buy or not. And mm -hmm. he's a fiction author, so it's for entertainment. So it's another kind of a distraction. Mm -hmm. I know stories from nonfiction authors that it's even worse for them. Yeah. But on the other hand, if you Facebook gives you the uh, the advertising options much mm -hmm. better than Amazon, you can narrow your target audience much sure. better. And if you send this traffic to Amazon and they will convert, then Amazon is learning from them what your mm -hmm. book is about. Ah, that's because okay, you, you got thousand people from Facebook and they have the same interests. 50 of them bought the book and then yeah. Amazon, okay, it is, so this crowd is interested this in is the book and they will, they start, Amazon start showing your book to this crowd. And there are also BookBub ads. BookBub is book promotion platform, book uh, okay. the, the biggest in the world. Like wow. they competitors are not hundred times, but rather thousand times smaller than them. Um, and they have their own advertising system and you can target them their different books and different authors so it also is good for targeting and teaching amazon uh yeah okay this crowd this mm -hmm. segment of market is interested in that specific book that's really interesting so you're using other people's advertising to train your own ad campaign over on amazon and then teaching Amazon, hey, these are the type of people who are clicking on the ad over on Facebook. So now that you have the list of people who are actually buying this, can you show the ad to these people? That's really smart. You're essentially riding on the shoulders of giants, right? You're learning from, hey, learn from this guy because you don't have a, 
I like it. I like it. You can theoretically do the same on Amazon itself, but okay. it's so much harder. It's like the harder. targeting is awful. Mm. You can actually only target specific books or specific authors. Got it. Or just keyword phrases. But when you target specific books or authors, guess what? Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is very popular and mm. you need to pay a fortune to just of show your ad, ad there. Yep. Got it. Yeah, that makes sense. This is a popular book. You want to put your ad in front of a popular book. You got to pay big money. Okay. So what's the next step now you okay and that's decided. the advertising part of marketing your book and i would say it's part yes i'm the guy who uh, make this part like 80 percent of my marketing mm. and this is a mistake it should be like 20 percent of your marketing okay. in the end this is the market advantage of self-published authors over traditionally published authors that they can do whatever they want when it comes to marketing the books and i would say one thing that is definitely working is being on podcasts and talking about your books and because i'm not <laughs> far away from being a full-time podcast guest sure i i having maybe one interview every two weeks mm -hmm. and still i can see that Every time uh, an episode goes live, uh, goes live, then I have a spike of sales, and people, of course, can go back into archives when they will find this podcast in a year. Go back to archives, find this exactly. episode, maybe check my books on Amazon, uh, and then there is and it's beneficial again because at least Amazon, where ninety nine percent of my sales happen. Mm -hmm rewards you from for external traffic so yes. if people will come from your podcast to my book pages mm -hmm. and will start buying amazon will be like oh this guy michal people are coming outside of amazon and mm -hmm. buying his books let's start showing his books more around because he's it seems like he's an interesting guy and the same goes with facebook ads or bookbub ads it's yeah. external traffic. It's a traffic that they don't need to facilitate. It just right. happens for them. And then yeah. they make money on book sales. So of course they want to uh, make me a success story. That's really smart. That's really smart because they want external traffic and that's why they pay affiliates money because they're bringing external traffic from YouTube, from podcasts, from Instagram, from all the diff different places. And no wonder that TikTok was like, hey, don't send your traffic to Amazon. We'll build a TikTok shop in here <laughs> so that you can, people can buy it. And you've probably seen that right now. There's a, there's a whole TikTok shop and you can have your products featured on there because people want to keep you on their platform. Hey, you don't need to go anywhere else. You can just buy it right here. You don't need to send people to Amazon because a lot of people were actually doing that on TikTok. They would advertise use these affiliate links from ClickBank and Amazon and send traffic to Amazon and TikTok caught on to it really quick. And within six months, we have a TikTok shop now. It's really cool. Okay. I love that. Advertising should be 20% of your marketing efforts for your book sales, for your books to market it. What are some other ways uh, people can market uh, and spend time on that? that you know that you should have been doing, but you just didn't had the opportunity to go and do it. Opportunity is one thing, laziness is the other. What works very well, of course, is your own email list. Mm. Like in every kind of business, it should be your number one resource. And as I told you, yeah, this is what I do with my book launches. I yeah. notify my email list. Okay, so at least this is what, the right thing I'm doing. So your email list, you should, of course, nurture your email subscribers, mm -hmm. uh, but they somehow got on your list. So they should be interested in your life, yeah. in your person and so yeah. on. That's number one. Number two are email lists of 
other people who are like in similar space. Like uh, my book will be featured on 11th and 12th on, during the so-called uh, Amazon Prime Day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We authors, the self-published authors, I know dozens of us will join our forces. Everybody will notify the email list about the event. Mm -hmm. We'll send people to a website where they can pick any book. Each book will be 99 cents. Mm -hmm. So this is the kind of marketing that's really working. Mm -hmm. And it makes also some magic within the Amazon algorithm because if there is a uh, a dozen of self-published authors writing self-help. Yeah. If we cross sell inside our lists, hundreds of books, then overnight, those books will appear in our others who bought this book bought also, mm -hmm. and it informs Amazon. Okay. So again, this book is for this target audience and we'll show it more to this audience. And then I can make more organic sales. Yeah. I like that a lot. So organic sales, ad sales, marketing to your email list, marketing to other people's email list. And I think podcasting, podcast guesting is technically marketing to other people's email list, right? Because you're guesting on a to totally different podcast every time. And then they'll promote... Uh, yeah, so I would uh, made a distinction between marketing to other authors in my lists because they oh, have the awesome. crowds that should be really uh, interested in buying books. Right. And then just marketing to other audiences. Hacks and Hobbies, yeah, this is yeah. a different crowd and this yeah. is a different mechanism because mm -hmm. people will just, I haven't mentioned any book title of mine, so they won't go directly to it. Maybe they will, if they are interested, they will land on my author profile on Amazon. Mm -hmm. So it's the same mechanism, but I would say email from an author to his email is saying, Michal has a book titled this, go there directly link, which will have so much better conversion that right. conversation on a podcast. No, you're absolutely right because it's more specific. It's a direct call to action as opposed to, oh, if they got to the part where you're talking about the book, oh, maybe I want to go take a look. It's a direct call to action versus a indirect action that they would they would probably take. One thing and also the audience. Yeah, okay, the audience of readers versus the audience or of business owners. They, they are overlap, but they are not the same, definitely. They're not the same. They're not this. Yeah, you're right. Man, this was really insightful. Thank you so much for telling and for sharing because I was just in my mastermind earlier today and I'm talking about writing two more books. And so he's my, my friend's asking me, uh, Angel, right? Angel. Yes. So how's the book sales for your first book? <laughs> I've sold 46 books over the past few months of I think of sorry 62 of those 46 are physical copies and then the other were ebooks and I recently just ordered like 40 physical books to sign and send it to uh, guests or sound and send it to people uh, that I meet like a business card and whatnot so he's let's focus on marketing your first book let's focus on bringing in more sales because you want to instill that behavior. Oh, Junaid is an author. He's writing content that's valuable. So then when you do have that second book out, they'll be more than happy to jump on and, and be like, oh my God, I want to learn that second journey. Because in the ending of the first book, I mentioned, hey, in the next book, we're going to talk about podcasting. We're going to next book, we're going to talk about this and that. So... What are your thoughts on what Angel recommended? Um, he is right because of course he is. you definitely do not want to write 10 more books, which each of them will sell uh, 62 copies and that's it. Like that beats the purpose. So 
Mm. Yes, definitely you need to get better at marketing. I would uh, use the rule of thumb uh, from Pat Flynn that you spend 20% on the creating the content and 80% right. effort on marketing. marketing. Can you say that you spent 80% on marketing? No, I, I don't think I did. <laughs> That's your answer. Yeah. Once you, let's say it, it took you three months to, to produce the book, mm -hmm. then you should spend four times more a year on marketing the book. Understood. Okay. And then you are done with the book. Okay. Okay. So we spent about two weeks on the book <laughs> from, I had written the book. I had written the chapter back in 2019, which was supposed to be part of a book, which got published, but then got pulled back because some of the people that are on the book didn't want it published. So I was like, I have this chapter waiting, let's convert it into a book. And that's where Angel helped me convert it into a book. We had some illustrations created using Midjourney to illustrate what are the different things that I was talking about. So in two to three weeks is when we essentially got the book completed and launched it on Amazon. And I think I probably spent maybe two weeks, maybe three weeks promoting the book uh, on my podcast in maybe one or two emails I sent. And when I went to PodFest, I had people pose with the book and sign a copy for them and then took those photos and shared it. So probably need to do a lot more marketing for sure. Cause I sounds like I just spent 20% in marketing, which was 50, 50, but I think I need to definitely spend a lot more time. And as one, one thing I can advise you, yeah. because I've seen your book on Amazon, mm -hmm. tell me how much time have you spent on writing the book description? How much time did I spend on writing the book description? Maybe about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. So 10 X that, and maybe that's enough. And that's not enough till actually you it's been proven that it mm -hmm. converts because it's one thing to slap something on amazon and feel like oh yeah that's great the other thing is steer traffic then to your book page and see how many readers you will get and then it appears it sucks so you reiterate yeah. it sucks yeah. again you reiterate mm -hmm. it sucks less you reiterate okay now it's a success and now you can hold on with uh, chiseling your book description and start uh, to do other activities because your book description is so important. It's your sales page. Yeah. So whatever kind of traffic will land on your book page, book description will convert it from Facebook ads, from other ads, from podcasts, from showing up on live, like on yeah. PodFest. Yeah. In the end, people will land on your book page and read the book description and it will be the final, like the final push if they will buy or not. So this is very but important. The, the book description is, is essentially the <laughs> dedication section. <laughs> so I probably yeah. need to be more terrible. terrible. Idea, man. <laughs> Thank you. I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that. So I will, I will <laughs> spend what was that 10 times more than the 20 minutes I spent on creating that? And, first and think of it like the sales page. Is dedication page a good material for a sales page? Not really. No nope. sales page. No, it is not a sales page material at all. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I like it. All right. Let's take a quick break. Michal, you've shared a ton. I love the advice. I love the journey that you take in, the wisdom that you shared on marketing your book, advertising your book, all the tweaks that you should be spending and, and making sure that everything is dialed in after testing and testing. And you're so right because as a UX designer, where we spend a ton of time entertaining, iter iterating the designs for websites, the designs for all the different things that we do. I need to do the same thing for my own book. All right, we're going to take a quick break. And when we get back, you'll have three hacks to share with the audience. 
Finding the right guest or podcast can feel like searching for a needle in a haystack, unless you bring a magnet. And thanks to Podmatch, a service that automatically attracts your ideal interview guests to your podcast. I've enjoyed using Podmatch for hacks and hobbies and interviewed over a hundred fantastic guests from this platform alone. Head on over to hacksandhobbies.com forward slash Podmatch to save time and find your perfect match. Check out Podmatch today. Again, go to hacksandhobbies.com forward slash Podmatch or tap on the link in the show notes. Hey guys, welcome back. We've been talking with Michal Stawiski on the podcast. I think I said it right, yeah? Yes, sir. Awesome. Hey guys, welcome back. We've been talking with Michal Stawiski on the podcast and he's shared some really amazing stories on the podcast, including his journey on how he became a book author, a book publisher, and now advertising and helping other clients on how to really bring traffic, really get those sales up for their books. He's shared some really, I'm saying a lot of really, he's he's shared some amazing uh, tips here, but hold on. He's got three additional hacks for us that we can implement in our book authoring journey or book marketing journey. I'll take it away. Yes, yeah, so the, the first hack will be pertaining to book marketing and this, this is what I already shared, your book description. Like it's a focal point of your whole marketing because whatever you will do, however you will drive traffic uh, to your book, in the end, people will make the decision unless they made it before because you were, for example, on author's email list and they trust that person, they will... Mm buy your book, whatever uh, it, it said in the book description, because they trust the other person. But normally, especially with, with advertising, when they don't know you at all, you land on your book page and your book description must convince them to buy. So mm. this is the hack. Focus a lot of energy on your book description and focus 80% of this energy and effort and time on the first sentence, the headline which hooks the attention of the people. Um, Kevin Cruz, my my friend, uh, says that the first sentence should be the ultimate premise of your book. So in case of your book is record high quality videos on your iPhone easily. This is the ultimate premise of your book. Mm. So your book description is important. And the headline is the most important part of your book description. And the other, the second most important part of your book description is call to action at the end. Uh, And you say, like on a sales page, what you want them to do. Buy the book, pick up your copy today. And then you provide a reason why they should, because this is how human psychology works if you provide the reason you they are more likely to follow your yeah. call to action so, so that's the marketing hack the life hack develop good habits this is how i transform my life and uh, it's so much easier to develop a new habit despite the fact that it's not that easy it's so much easier than trying to break a bad habit because yeah. when you try to break a bad habit you focus on the bad habit so you mm-hmm. give energy to it and it's harder but yeah. if you focus on developing a new habit then the new energy your effort your time goes to the, this new thing and the old thing will starve itself that's natural yeah. and the hack within the hack starts very small tiny habits by bj fogg if not read the book, then he has uh, like free course on his website. It's tinyhabits.com slash join. Mm-hmm. This free course takes you like one hour in one week. Tadam, and you will know how to develop good habits. I highly recommend uh, this action to take and also developing good habits as a way to really change yeah. yourself and then change your life. And the first thing will be I'm also a business coach and I work with solopreneurs and 
I think quite a lot of your audience are mm -hmm. uh, solopreneurs or small business owners. And what's a big discovery for many of them is that you are your business. So take mm -hmm. care of yourself, yeah, your health, your mental health. Uh, and also productivity is not just doing, but having this wide space, this time when you don't think or just mm -hmm. freely reflect on something, then the best ideas uh, come to you. Like I've been listening to so many entrepreneurship podcasts. Mm -hmm. And if I get a dollar for every time I can, I hear when I was on a walk or when I was under a shower, uh, <laughs> I got this brilliant idea. Uh -huh. It They happen there because yeah. it's, this is this white, white space time for yeah. yourself. So schedule this time, journal every morning, meditate mm -hmm. and so on. Take care of yourself because if not you, then who? Come on. Mm -hmm. And if you don't care of yourself, it's like not taking care of your business. And I convinced yeah. About that, my friend Mark Reclau, best selling author, like he started scheduling in his calendar, like times for walks and for naps. That's his business time. That's and he, time, yeah. now he, he does it because, okay, now he has no remorse. Okay. That's his obligation to do it yeah. because yeah. then he takes care of his business. Man, that's powerful. I, I love the three hacks. Absolutely. The number one is, make sure that your book description is your sales page content because you want them to take action and click on that yellow button and buy the book on whichever platform that they, they might be on. I think number two was really brilliant because starting a new habit is much easier than trying to break an old habit. And there a new habit that I've actually started is to read more from the Quran on a daily basis or get up early and pray and read some Quran. And it's so much easier to do because I'm not focusing on breaking some old thing, which is then going to linger. It's almost like when you try to wash a dish, you're not going to focus on, oh my God, how do I clean this? You're going to literally take it to the water because that's adding new stuff to the plate, to the dish to make sure that it gets clean. And creating a new habit is doing exactly the same thing. You're putting in new information in your mind, try, instead of trying to take out stuff. I love it. And we have to take care of our bodies because these bodies are our businesses. And if we didn't, if we, if we didn't exist, our business doesn't exist. Recently, a friend of mine close to me passed away. We just discovered last, basically yesterday <clears throat> that he passed away and There's, he wasn't a business person, but he leaves behind his family. But it's crazy how you never know when your time comes up because it is the most certain thing and the most un, what's the word? unscheduled activity <laughs> that will be Amen. in your life. <laughs> it is unscheduled. So make sure you schedule the things that's going to keep you <laughs> here longer and that's so you can fulfill your dreams. So thank you so much, Michal, for your wisdom. I really appreciate that. This was so much fun. Let's jump into our rapid fire questions. These are on the spot and I'd love to see where you're at. Number one, what is the one hobby that you wish you got into? Seriously, I cannot think of one. Like because hobby. you already did it all <laughs> not that and yes like writing is i write and i feel like it's my pastime i enjoy doing this so seriously it's hard for me i know maybe that people you, wish you started earlier writing i mean like a lot of people say oh yeah i i remember me thinking when you said about you know, well it's a certain age i was dreaming about writing when i was 10 years old I yeah. read a lot of books and I was, I would like to write as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's the next question. What did you want to be when you were a child? Oh, plenty of things like every child. Mm -hmm. They have no limits on the imagination. I remember wanting to be a farmer, to be a, what's the English name? 
like Forest Ranger mm. and also a writer. Yeah, definitely. That was one of the earliest of, of dreams of mine. I love it. Next up, what is your favorite movie or TV show? Movie or TV show? Okay, let's scratch TV shows. Uh, okay. I don't watch many of them. A movie. Favorite. I don't have a favorite movie. I I like on the one hand like very deep movies but they are usually like one timers and three billboards behind something misery very strong movie but i watched it once that's enough for me but action movies i can watch them yeah over and over again and what i like in them is of course this this heroist part like this one hero beats all the bad guys and yeah so my favorite I, I i tell you my favorite scene in all the movies i've ever watched is from patriot with mel gibson when he and his two sons which are about 10 yeah are killing a batch on a uh, bunch of english soldiers i can yeah. wa- watch that scene like 10 times over like went over again yeah that was a really powerful movie for sure the patriot and it's really interesting how Mel Gibson likes to play those characters. Like I've seen a lot of his movies. He has a very similar character. But yeah, that was a really good one. It was a really good one. All right, next up. What movie would you choose if you got to play a character in it? Main role or just show up? It could be anybody. Movie. It could be you could be the main role. It doesn't you get to choose. Man, you ask such difficult questions. <laughs> the, the questions which I never wonder at about. Yeah. So that's why they're towards the end of the episode. Yeah. Yeah. I have it. Of course, I would love to play a part in Avengers. Oh, yes. Which character would you choose? Any of them. Like <laughs> a hero is a hero. <laughs> yes, that is true. That is true. A hero is a hero with their own journey and you're the hero of your story, right? You've gone through some ups and downs and and all the things that a hero faces. That's why they call it a hero's journey. And that takes us to the next question. Who is your favorite superhero? Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Love it. And last question. If you were a board game, what would it be? Mm. I won't give you a name because I'm not that uh, knowledgeable about board games, sure. but definitely some strategic slash tactical battle game. Like I like play chess? them. At, no, how, chess, chess is the universal That's battle universal game. That's the universal battle game, yeah. Exactly. So yeah, I could be a chess. Could be a chess board. Man, yep. I love it. Thank you so much. Michal, this was a ton of fun. I appreciate you bringing all the power and all the wisdom to the episode. Where can my audience find you and get one of your books? Books, Amazon. Like I said, 99% of my sales happen there. And it's a blessing to be a Polish guy in the English speaking space. If you just type my name and then add anything to it, Mm. books, blog, book advertising, or some social media yeah twitter facebook you will find me in no time so google and there i am my blog is expandbeyondyourself.com oh my god i love that name thank you so much michal this was a lot of fun and until the next episode we'll talk to you soon thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode on hacks and hobbies we absolutely appreciate your contribution you can find additional notes on hacksandhobbies.com please share the podcast with your friends and tell them what you learned about our guest today